science fiction has long been dominated by zombies. Right? These things, the walking dead, don't really exist. Do they? Wrong. In reality, there are a number of conditions that might actually cause you to behave like a zombie. Let's first discuss what we believe to be the features of a zombie in order to set the scene. It is possible for many reasons to believe in the living dead. And there are illnesses that cause some people to act like they are. Other intriguing characteristics include dead or rotting flesh, trance-like states, an inability to speak other than through groaning, a slow, shuffle-like walk, and, if we're lucky, a propensity for biting others, or unlucky. What conditions can make you act like a zombie then? While rabies won't normally cause a person to bite another person, it can mirror some of the symptoms of the zombies craving for brains. The rabies virus spreads through animal bites infected with the disease, which results in severe brain inflammation. Full or partial paralysis, mental impairment, agitation, weird behavior, mania, and delirium are some of the signs and symptoms of rabies. True, there aren't many rabid individuals roaming the streets biting others. But many rabid animals turn vicious and attack. If rabies was ever a widespread virus or was able to mutate, we might just be in for a viral zombie apocalypse. It might be feasible if someone with a propensity for aggressive behavior contracted rabies to want to munch on every person they see in their brains. Viruses entering the human body have been known to cause many things we can't always define. Sleeping sickness is a common disease in Africa brought on by the parasite Trypanosoma brucei, which is spread by tsetse flies. Once the parasites have infected the brain in the later stages of the sickness, patients lose their appetite, have trouble focusing, become agitated, and have slurred speech. The majority struggle to stay awake during the day and have trouble falling asleep at night, which makes them appear like zombies before they pass out in a coma. The majority of survivors suffer from permanent brain damage. This is a serious illness and there have been reports of wild behavior as some incidents, such as biting others who are trying to help them or scratching at their own heads. Dysarthria is a condition that affects the motor functions of speaking in people. Its neurological origins make it compatible with zombie lore's emphasis on the brain. Dysarthria can have a variety of causes but they are all characterized by a nervous system malfunction. That makes it difficult to control the tongue, lips, throat, or lungs. This difficulty in controlling these muscles leads to difficulty articulating and can result in the inability to communicate beyond incomprehensible noises, much like the moans and groans of zombies. This one is the least likely candidate to case a zombie apocalypse, but it sure does mimic zombie lore. Mycobacterium leprae is an intensely toxic bacteria that causes leprosy. Leprosy cases have been documented for more than 4,000 years. And given that rotting skin and decaying body parts are a prevalent element of zombies, it would appear that leprosy and its similarly sounding symptoms would be a perfect source for such stories. Although it is a fallacy that leprosy causes body parts to fall off, it can nevertheless damage a numbness, which can result in a slow, shuffle-like gait that is reminiscent of a zombie. With a little imagination, the skin lesions that are likely the primary sign of leprosy give skin the sickly, decomposing image we associate with zombies. If a human being contracted a virus that causes leprosy-like symptoms and rabid-like characteristics, I think we would be in trouble. What do you think about zombies? Can they really exist? Or is it too far-fetched to actually be real? Let's hope that we never find out. Until next time, don't forget to like and subscribe to our channel.